this is that you see if you refuse to walk in power and authority if you refuse to become a medium through which God is working somebody's destiny is going down the drain God told Abraham that I will bless you and through you all nations shall be blessed. Meaning that the blessings of the nations shall was tied to the blessings of Abraham. May God tie the destinies of people to your life. Oh, your amen is sick. May God tie the destinies of people to your life. Because of you, may people see the light of God. Because of you, may people see the glory of God. Because of you, may people experience the power of God. If you believe in shout, I believe. Now, in order to be somebody experiencing this power, you must be able to plug it. You see, let me give you a wonderful example. Papa, do you know that as we are here, BBC Three Counties Radio is playing. Do you know there's a radio called BBC Three Counties Radio? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know it is playing now? Yes. How many of you hear it? If you hear BBC Three Counties Radio playing now, lift up your hand. Let me see. How many of you hear? Is it playing? No. No, is it playing? Yes. It's BBC, BBC Three Counties Radio. One, one popular station here is Hearts. It's in Milton Kings. Is it playing? But can you hear? What do I need to do to hear? I need to get my mobile phone or a radio. And I need to what? Tune to what? The frequency. And if I tune to the frequency, I can hear the radio what? Play. Listen. The power is available, but there is something you must be able to do to tune in. Tonight, you will be called how to tune in. I said you will be called how to tune in. After this eight day fasting, your Christian life will change. Amen. How you see God will change. Amen. Now, the Bible says that Angel Gabriel came to Mary and told Mary that, Mary, this is what I'm going to do to you. And through you, we are going to give birth to the biggest thing that has happened to the world. The world has not experienced anything like that. Through you, we are bringing the Messiah, and he's God himself. And Mary said, what are you talking about? Joanna is there better than me. Mercy is better than me. All these ladies, why me? The angel said, because you have found favor before God. Amen. And she said, okay, fine, I understand, but how is this thing possible? I don't know a man. In order for a child to be born, there must be a union or an intercourse between a man and a woman. Angel, I believe everything that you are saying, but this thing will not be possible. How? The angel said, Mary, it is possible because the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Amen. He said, Mary, it is possible not because of anything, but if the Holy Ghost overshadows you, the impossible shall be possible. Amen. Then no wonder as an there's still debate about our Messiah. Because people don't understand how a virgin can give birth. You know what? A God is a God who defies every odd and every law set by man. May God bypass every law and bring favor upon your life. Amen. Your amen is still sick. Amen. Your amen is lying at R&D. Shout the biggest thing back. So he said that the Holy Ghost will come upon you and when he comes upon you, you shall produce Amen. and bring that son. Tonight I told you that, you see, tonight the Holy Ghost is all we need. Yes. He's all we need in order to be positioned to be endowed with this power that is available. Amen. But I'm going to tell you three ways and if them should permit us, four ways through which you can plug into the power. Yesterday we understood that when Jesus Christ resurrected, the Bible said that he revealed himself to about 500 people, but in the upper room, there were only about 120 people. And I said that, you see what the power is available, but it is not everybody that would experience it or work the power. It takes only the people that will plug in. Amen. So tonight, let nobody disturb you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let nobody disturb you. One of the scriptures that I fear the most it's Matthew 24. Jesus said two women shall be on the field. As a matter of fact, a man and a wife will be on the same bed. The Bible says that one will be carried away, the other will be left. So for me, when it comes to the kingdom matters, I beg. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I've told patience, auntie, work out your own salvation. Amen. I can help you, but work it out. 
Because if one will be left and one will go, I want to be the one who would go. Whether you will join me or not, it is your own cup of tea. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, don't let anybody disturb you. Yes. Learn as much as you can and tap into this power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Mimi. Read from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost When the day of Pentecost had come They were all with one accord in one place All of them when was with one accord And in one place And suddenly there came a sound from heaven Suddenly there came a sound from heaven As of a rushing mighty wind Continue And it filled the whole house where they were sitting It filled the whole house where they were sitting Continue then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. It appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire. Continue. And one sat upon each of them. And sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Thank you. They began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2.42 And they continue steadfastly. They continue steadfastly. Say steadfastly. Oh, say steadfastly. They continued what? In Acts chapter 2, Jesus, Acts chapter 1, 8, Jesus told them to go and wait until their power comes. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that they go into the upper room and they go there, they begin to pray, and as they are praying and waiting, the Holy Ghost comes upon them and they don't just stop there. In Acts chapter 2 verse 42, the Bible says that though they received the Holy Ghost, they did not go and sleep, but they continued what? Steadfast. There's a certain anointing you received tonight. There's a certain anointing you received on Monday. And there's a certain anointing you receive from today to next week, Monday. But in order to operate in that anointing, you must continue steadfast. Amen. Steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines or their teachings, they continue steadfastly in the potency of the word. They continue steadfastly in every sermon Pastor Edu Jamfi was preaching. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Continue in, in the fellowship that is in communion, in unity, because the Bible says in Acts chapter two that when they were in the upper room. Church, let me tell you, the more united we are, the more power we carry. Amen. You see, there is something called the multiplicity of the power. You see, one plus one is two, but the Bible says that when it comes to the kingdom, one will chase thousands, two will not chase two thousands, but two shall chase ten thousands. When it comes to the power and the anointing in the body of Christ, it is not an addition, but it is a multiplicity. Amen. So the more anointed people we are, the more dangerous we are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The more anointed people we are have in the church, the more anointed people we have in the ministry, the more Pastor Dujavis' work will become less. If Pastor Dujavis should walk into the church, and as he's walking, the crowd are ministering, and the Holy Ghost is moving, and everybody is touched, and the whole atmosphere is saturated, he just needs to take the microphone for two seconds, and the glory of God will overshadow. They are continued in fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in what? Prayer. And in prayer. Church, Hallelujah. one of the keys mm -hmm. to working and moving mm -hmm. and producing mm -hmm. and manifesting yes. the power is by having a prayer life. Amen. Now, listen. It is not the longer you pray, yeah. that makes God do something. No. But it is impossible to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost, Amen. with Jesus, and with the Father, without a prayer line. Amen. Ask anybody that is an anointed man, is a prayer for man. Amen. Read for me, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Pursue love, 
and desire spiritual gifts, uh -huh. but especially that you may prophesy. Uh -huh. For he who speaks in tongues, he that speaks in tongues, does not speak to men. He does not speak unto man, but to God. To God, pause them. When you have a prayer life, you have communion with God. Now you have to understand that the source of all power is God. The source of the force of power is God. Until Moses ascended the mountain, went to be with God, the glory of God was not upon him. The people looked at him and despised him every single day. But the Bible said that when he climbed up the mountain and went to be with God, when he came, he was so full of God, full of the glory of God, that the same people that watched him and despised him, they could not watch his face because he had been with God and he was endowed with power. Amen. On the mountain of transfiguration, the Bible says that God, Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up on the mountain to pray. And the Bible says that as they were praying, Elijah and Moses visited. Elijah represented the prophets. Moses represented the word. In his moment of prayer, there was an intercourse between the prophetic and the word. And as there was an intercourse between the prophetic and the word, the Bible says that the glory of God overshadowed them. Every man of prayer is a man that carries the glory. Every man of prayer is a man that carries fire. Uh, Martin Luther, John Wesley said, give me hundred men who know how to pray and they fear God and I'll take over the whole world. The Bible makes us understand that Jesus, who was God himself, I believe that if anybody did not need prayer, Jesus did not need prayer because he was God himself. But the Bible makes us understand he prayed in the morning, he prayed in the afternoon, he prayed in the evening, he prayed at all times. And if you observe the ministry of Jesus, there was not a single time he walked out of his house and healed the sick and prayed. He prayed in the closet. Amen. So when he gets out, he doesn't have to pray. He declared be healed and he's healed. Amen. Get up and they get up. Pick up your sick bed. They pick up their sick bed. Because he has powered himself in the power bank of prayer. Amen. Let me tell you, until you develop a prayer life, you'll be an ordinary Christian. Amen. You cannot be a Christian who does not have a prayer life. John 10, Jesus said that I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. From that they understood that you are not a Christian until you have the ability to hear his voice. And the third place where you hear his voice, apart from coming to church to hear the pastor preach, the place where you hear the audible voice of God is when you develop the life of prayer. You don't pray as a ritual like the Muslims do, but you pray because you have a certain God you yearn for, you cherish. Huh? David says that as the deer pant for the waters, so my soul pant for you. He said, why would I come and stand before my living God? David was eager always, huh? to go and stand before his God and how do you stand before your God and hear his voice? It is in the place of prayer. Amen. One way we can plug into the power is by developing an attitude of prayer. You don't wait for the church to declare a fasting. Oh, Jesus Christ himself, the one who was God himself, oh, for 30 years of his life, he was just Jesus, until the Holy Ghost descended upon him. And for Jesus to start his ministry, he had to go into incubation, go to the wilderness, put the bread aside, put the tea aside, put the fasting, the, the rice aside, go without water, go without food for 40 days. In the ark, Noah was there for 40 days. On the mountain, Moses went to God for 40 days. As you are sitting here, people are going before God. What makes you think you can lay your hands upon the sick and command them to arise if you don't have a life of prayer? Amen. There is power in the prayer bar. Look, observe yourself. You, observe yourself. Anytime you proceed on a fast, 
you pray. There are some words you can't even say. Amen. Uncle, is it true? Yeah. But if you are not fasting, any careless word can come out of your mouth. But when you are fasting, you humble the flesh. Amen. Now, as long as the flesh is humbled, the spirit is active. Amen. The Bible says that the spirit is constantly at war with the flesh. Amen. And in order for the spirit to prevail, we must act Adopt an attitude of prayer. As we are reading in 1 Corinthians 14, he said that he that prayeth in an unknown tongues, he edifies himself. Another version says that he builds up himself. A prayer line builds you up. It builds and flexes your spiritual muscles. A man with a prayer line is a man that carries power. Amen. Prayer will cause a man to stop sinning or sinning will cause a man to stop praying. Amen. That's love. Amen. As the way in the upper room. Pray in Kataba Zudiata. Linta dia suke brekapa. The Bible says that as they were praying, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost loves an atmosphere of prayer. If you want the Holy Ghost to dwell in your house, develop. You see what I love about prayer is that you don't need to be in the church. You can be on your toilet. You can be in the car. The thing about prayer is that you don't even need to open your mouth for somebody to hear what you are saying. But the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. Elijah. Elijah was a man of prayer and the Bible says that he prayed and he declared that for three and a half years there should be no rain and the Bible says that the heavens listened to him. One man with no permission from God stopped rain for three and a half years. Amen. The Bible says and he prayed again. He prayed again. And the heavens gave up rain. And the earth yielded its fruit. May the power of prayer be incorporated into your life. Oh somebody, may you go beyond five minutes of prayer. May you go beyond ten seconds of prayer. May you go beyond twenty minutes of prayer. From today, may you stand on your clothes and let that tika tatapa for one hour and you're not tired. For 45 minutes and you're not tired. May the grace of prayer arise upon your life. For a prayerful man is a powerful man. In order for us to walk in this power, church, prayer must be an attitude. It may not be something of self righteousness. Well, you are proving you can pray. For Jesus said that don't be like this hypocrite who stand in the marketplaces and they speak loud words and pray because they think that their voice will be heard because of the many of them. We don't pray because we want to prove to people we can pray. We don't pray because we want to excite people, but we have come to understand that if we can hear this God, if we can have the fellowship with this Holy Ghost, we can we must develop an attitude of prayer because it is in the attitude of prayer and in the place of prayer while we hear his voice. Amen. You wonder why you can't hear when God speaks. Check your prayer life. Amen. The Bible said, as they were praying, suddenly, you see, when you enter into a prayer atmosphere, there is a suddenly. Heaven arises and says, where is that noise coming from? Suddenly, let us go and listen. And the Bible says that suddenly there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and the Holy Ghost came upon them and settled upon their head. Now, watch this when the Holy Ghost came like fire, it not settled in their hands, it not settled on their legs, it not settled on their stomach, but it settles upon your head in order for the Holy Ghost to be able to work through you and work in you, He must be your head. He must take possession of your thinking faculty. You have got to get to the place where you say, Lord, none delays, not me that live it, but thou that live it in me. Holy Ghost from today, think through me, possess my head, be the head of my life. Be not drunk with wine, worried in the access, but be filled, be drunk with the Holy Ghost. Be possessed by the Holy Ghost. Get 
to a certain place in life uh, where you don't make decisions for yourself, uh, where you don't declare where you want to go. The Bible says that the wind listed and it blow it. We hear the sound thereof, but we don't know where it is going, whether it is and where it is coming from. So is any man born of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost must take over our heads. Prayer and the attitude of prayer produces power. Jesus actually said that you see, don't be too quick to speak. Don't be too quick. But be quick to listen. Be quick to hear. You know one of the reasons why we pray and we get tired and we can't continue because in our prayer room we talk at God. We don't let God talk to us. There's a difference between talking at God and to God talking to you. Papa, when I come and say, oh, Papa, you see, this and that and that and that and that and that. Then, 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 then. I've come to you because I believe you hold a solution. And after I finish, I say, thank you. And I go. <laughs> Communication is not complete until there is a feedback. Amen. Communication is irrelevant if the other party is not giving the opinion to speak. So God is saying that yes, when you come before me in one hour, speak for 15 minutes and wait for 45 minutes. Don't move out of that place until you hear me speaking. You have come with your opinion, but you must live with my opinion. Amen. If prayer will be enjoyable, we have to develop the waiting attitude Amen. and the listening attitude. Yes, Lord. You want to speak to God, what did God say to you? What did God tell you? But we have to learn that when we come into his closing, after we have spoken, we say, Master, speak thy servant here. Amen. Waiting for the, your gracious word. Longing for thy voice that cheereth. Master, let it now be heard. I am longing, Lord, for thee. What hast thou to say to me? So when we go for one hour, we speak for 10 minutes. And for 15 minutes, we are there quietly. The worship song is playing. If he's not speaking, we are still there waiting. And one word from God is able to turn every situation around. In life, the voice of God is the voice of direction. For 30 years, Jesus was an ordinary man. Until one day, a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. And after that voice, his life turned around. May the voice of God echo over your life. May the voice of God be heard in your life. May your ears be attentive to his voice. May the spirit of prayer encapsulate you. Prayer is essential. If you become people that work and demonstrate the power of God. And it is not an option. It is a must. Amen. It is not an option. You see, how many minutes do we spend in church? For a day, there's 24 hours. We come to church Sunday, how many hours? Three hours. Maximum three hours. Tuesday, how many hours? Two hours. Friday, how many hours? Two hours. Two plus two, four. Four plus three, how many? Seven. The whole week, church, we are here, and we hear the voice of God through the man of God for seven hours. Even in a day, there's 24 hours. Even in a day, even in a day, there's 24 hours. And for you, for the whole week, if you've not come to church, you don't hear the voice of God. So in a whole week, you are operating on seven hours of his voice. When even in a day, there's 24 hours. 24 by 7. Put it into calculation. So when we come and pastor is equipping us, when we go into our houses and our closet, we should come to the place where we have a relationship. And you cannot develop a relationship without prayer. Because prayer is the only medium you speak to God. It's the only medium you speak to God. When you read his word, he's speaking to you. But in order for you to talk to him, the only medium he has given you in prayer, that's why he says that you can do it at all times. The Bible says that pray at all times and 
with all kinds of prayers and supplications. He said that do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your heart desires known unto the Lord. The Bible said that we should pray without ceasing. The more you pray, the more your spirit man takes control of your physical life. The more you pray, the more your spirit man is charged up. When you pray and you speak, power back the way. There are people who just speak, but there are people that speak and power backs it. When Theresa May declares a word in this nation, the land will respond to it quickly than you declare. Because she did not just speak, power backs it. We call it dedicated authority. May the authority of God come over your life. Amen. I said, may the authority of God come over your life. Amen. From tonight, you will declare go and it shall go. You will declare come and it shall come. You declare out and it shall go out. You declare be filled and it shall be filled. Why? Because the power of God will overshadow your life. Amen. The people that are operating in power, they are not better than you. They are just people that have devoted themselves to a relationship. Amen. Declare prayer. Say prayer. Pray. Say prayer. Pray. So one of the points is that in order for us to be able to walk in power, we have to de- de- we have to be able to have the attitude of a praying man. Amen. Of a praying man. Amen. That's why I thank God for pastor. That he has put in a prayer meeting together. And after this, July, is it July or July? We go for another 30 days. And he's, he's teaching you. He's teaching you. He's trying to let you know that it is necessary. It is necessary. I'm not standing here to boast. I'm saying this thing to encourage you. For every year, for me, for once, for every year, every year, I have to make sure that I do 40 days fasting. And God, God being so good, but unfortunately for me, I've landed in this church also. And normally my 40 days starts from August. And I can't say I'm in this church. And there's a fasting from 30 from July. I can't do. So when I finish the 30 days, immediately I finish the 40 is waiting for me. So from July all the way to September, I must go for 70 days. I'm not saying this thing to boast or to tell you anything, but I'm telling you that you see, in order for you to stand there and declare a word for the lives of people to change, you must do something nobody is doing. Results, you have to be doing somebody something no one is doing, no. Because if you're doing things like the way everybody is doing, you would have the same results. Amen. And the world does not celebrate people who are usual, they celebrate people that goes beyond the ordinary. Amen. May you go beyond the ordinary, Amen. may you become an extraordinary Christian. May God bring you from the place of ordinary to extraordinary. May the power from on high overshadow you. If you believe that, lift up your head and say, I hear you. Now, apart from having a prayer life, pastor started with us on Monday, in order for you to be somebody who works in power, you have to be a man of the word. Listen, it is not your words that change, changes man. It is the word of God that changes man. Amen. He said that I have sent forth my word. And it would accomplish every purpose. He touched the tongue of Jeremiah and he said that, see, I have touched your lips. From today, whatever you lose shall be loosed. Whatever you bind shall be bound. I have set you over nations and kingdoms. Church, listen. God did not bring us here to fight over an eight-hour job. You did not come to UK for an eight-hour job, five days a week. God brought you here to take nations and kingdoms. What a mediocre mindset we have. Look at the Muslims. Look at them. Observe them. Look at their ways and their shoulders and their dealings. Everything they do is geared towards taking the land. And for us, we think we are just here to just do an eight hour job, be fine, rent a house. If God helps us build some two story buildings in Ghana, there's two, you, you, you are here suffering to build two story buildings in Ghana and you don't even live in that two story building. You think that God, God, by his grace, brought you to UK just that you go and build a two-building facility. 
Let me tell you, if you die, the building will not go into your coffin. There is more assignment, there is more reason over your life than just building a two-building mansion. Amen. He said, I have saved you over nations and kingdoms. Amen. In Psalm 27, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth as your possession. This place should not be enough to contain ICC. Say there is an assignment to my life. Say I carry assignment. I carry an uncommon purpose. Say from today, I walk in my divine assignment. Let me tell you, when the, when the hand of God is over your life, the amount of money in your bank account is irrelevant. I told you something. Forgive me. Some of you, your degrees and the money in your account Pastor does not have even a quarter of it, but you are sitting here to listen to him. Amen. It tells you that when anointing is speaking, money shut up. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands and give Jesus. God wants to make you somebody whose voice echoes around the world. Amen. Young man, do you, do, you, do, you hear what, do you hear what I'm saying? You are here for a greater purpose. Maybe by the time you are coming, you did not know. The Bible says that the things we did in ignorance, you overlooked. Jesus says that as long as it is day, I must work the work of you that sent me. Jesus said that four things have death, birds have nest, but the son of man have no place to lay. He said, Jesus said that my focus is not on a house. Amen. Peter said we have left our houses, left our wives, left our children to follow. You think the reason why Jesus Christ came to die is so that you will marry? Somebody left their wife and went to follow Jesus. Amen. I'm not saying go and leave your wife. <laughs> but what I'm telling you is that there is more for your life than just marrying and getting a house and a car. Amen. Somebody's destiny is tied to you. If you fail to manifest, somebody is dying. Amen. If you don't speak for a colleague of yours is going to hell. That's the essence of life. Amen. Now, in order for us to walk in this power and to plug in this power, we have to become people of the word. Amen. Maybe read this thing word for me. Read Ecclesiastes 2 for Ecclesiastes 8 4. Quickly for me. I want to finish this thing in the next 10 minutes. Where the word of a king is. Where the word of a king is. There is power. There is what? Power. Come on, church, there is what? There is what? Are you a king? Oh, are you a king? Are you a king? Let me tell you, you see, the Bible says that as many as believed him, he gave them the right to become sons of God. When the Bible talks about sons, it includes male and female. In the kingdom, we don't have queens, we have kings. So when you're talking about kings, it is both feminine and masculine. And the Bible says that where the word of a king is, there is power. Anybody that is endowed with the fullness of the Holy Ghost, if you speak power, must solve the matter. Amen. 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 Wherever you speak, power would occupy that place. Amen. Oh, I said power will settle that matter. Amen. What the word of a king is, there is power. So power is produced through the word. I don't want to waste so much time on that aspect because pastor dealt with the potency of the word on Monday and I was so blessed. But I want to make a little emphasis on the word. Give me um, Hebrews 11.6. But without faith, it is impossible. To but without faith, it is impossible. It is, you see, your money does not, it's not what pleases God, but it's the faith in which you use your money that pleases God. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Continue. For he who comes. Now, this is where I want us to come. For he who comes to God, to God must believe, must believe that, he is, that he is and that he's a rewarder. Of those who seek him diligently, sit down. You see, I want to emphasize on the word believe. Amen. Say believe. believe. 
Believe. Do you believe that all things are possible? Yes. Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus said, ask them, do you believe I can do this? He said, Lord, I believe. Help my own belief. He said, believe. He that come to God must believe. We must not just speak the word, but we must believe. Amen. There is a word that is just spoke, but there is a word that is spoke out of belief. Amen. Belief is deeper than just speaking it. He that cometh to God must believe. It is true words. Be and live. Be the word. Be somebody who lives in the word and you become a believer. The certain is that many of us respect the word, but we don't believe. And when you spread the word without believing, you will not have results. Amen. Your head is aching you. Oh, yeah. Father, I declare healing. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Hey, this head could kill me. I, I believe. I'm, I'm, in the name of Jesus, I am the head and not the tail. Uh, and, uh, and then after five minutes, you're like, hey. Let me take the paracetamol. Even oh God who went through the paracetamol. Okay, okay. Oh, maybe God does not want my healing. Okay, maybe this headache is the will of God. Okay, Father, I know anything can be. You don't believe. The one that believes, he says the word, and while the word is spoken, that is it. Whatever happens, that is not relevant. He does not consider the Bible said that Eve and the Abraham and Sarah they did not consider the deadness of their womb. They did not consider the physical situation. The physical condition meant nothing to them. All they did was that they believed in who has promised them. My question is that do you believe? If I come to you and I say tomorrow, God is anointing you to do the impossible, would you believe? It is one thing to speak. But the place of believing is where the word is mixed with faith and is mixed with your spirit, your soul, and your body, and you become one with the spoken word. That means that you are inseparable. You cannot be separated. You and the word cannot be separated. They cannot separate you from the word you are speaking. They cannot separate you from the word that you are hearing. And in order for the word to be effective, we must believe the word. sick. He lays his hands on you. Do you believe? Because your belief or your unbelief would make your prayer of non-effect. Jeremiah 29. Are you here, church? Yes. Is it working? Yes. Jeremiah 29. Yes. 20 verse 9. 29 verse 9. 29. 29. Jeremiah 29. Yes. 20 verse 9. 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 Uh, put it on the board for me. Etc. Etc. 20 verse 9. Okay. I read the word. Read it. Then I said, This is Jeremiah speaking, and he said, I said, I will not make mention of him. I will not speak about this word anymore. Men, I, I will not mention. He said, I've got into that place. Pastor, I wanted to speak to you, Pastor. He said, I have got into the place where I will not make mention of the word anymore. You see, Pastor don't want me to speak Hebrew because most of you don't understand Hebrew. Continue. No, speak anymore. He said, Jeremiah said, You see, God. You told me to say this. I want to say this. Now people change their mind. You you want to do something. And so now I look like a liar. I've got you to the place where I don't want to even speak of you anymore. Continue. But his word was in But he says, but his word. Say his word. His word. Oh, say his word. his word. He said, but his word is like what? In my heart, like a burning fire. It is in my heart, like what? Burning fire. Uh-huh. Shut up in my heart. Shut up in what? In my bones, he said that the word of God is not just coming out of my mouth, but the word of God is deep and is burning in my heart. 
and to shut up in my bones. What he says, I've got into the place where you can't separate me from the world. He said, you can't separate us, Sada. You can't separate us. That way I have become the word and the word has become me. Amen. So even when my mouth don't want to speak it, the word is like fire and it's burning me. Jeremiah had got to the certain place where the word of God was intertwined with his soul, his body and the spirit. And he came to the place where there was oneness between him and the word. And when you get to the place where there's oneness between you and the word, when you lay your hands and say, in the name of Jesus, be healed, the word which is Jesus living inside of you will come out of you and bring healing. The servants that just speak a word because he knew that Jesus speaking the word is like Jesus coming into his house for Jesus is the word. We cannot work in power without the word. From Monday to Sunday, you don't even open your Bible. Your Bible is so nice. Anybody whose Bible is so nice, check the reader. Bible is not for decoration. If your Bible is cute, you have a problem. Because if you are reading it every day, you are touching it every day, you are marking it every day, you are writing it, it every day, you are chewing it every day, it will not be cute. Amen. Clap your hands and keep Jesus. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 3. Let's do quickly, let me touch on the last one and then we'll pray. Hebrews 3 19. So we see that they could not enter in. We see that the people could not enter into the promise of God. They could not enter into the rest of God. They could not produce the miracle of God. Because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. They did not enter to the rest because they were fornicating. It was not fornication that caused them not to enter. It was not drunkenness and smoking that did not let them enter. The bigger sin is the sin of unbelief. Amen. It's like you are telling God that you are not capable. That's why he says, without faith, it is impossible. Church, the word must be in us. Amen. The word residing in us is Jesus residing in us. Amen. And when demons meet Jesus, they have to bow. The man, the Bible talks of the madman at Gadara. He says that when the demon met Jesus, the uh, demon himself came and knelt down and said, Master, why have you come here to torment us before our time? When you are a carrier of the word, when demons come, they bow before you because they know every word that comes out of your mouth will be like fire and will burn them up. Receive the grace to study the word. Receive the grace to consume the word and let the word become one with you. Your word is like fire. All that I'm trying to tell you is that, you see, to walk in power is not automatic. It's a conscious effort. Amen. In life, there's no automatic thing. Before you got out of your room today, I made a conscious effort. This is what I'm wearing. This is what I'm doing. Your work with God, in as much as it is propelled by the Holy Spirit, there has to be an essence of consciousness. Amen. The decision to make, you see, salvation is free, but until you consciously accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you would go to hell, even though Jesus has died for everybody. Amen. So even though salvation is free, you have to pay a price by accepting it. Amen. Even though we are living on the days of his power, yes, you could be somebody who's experiencing the miracles, but if you want to be somebody who is manifesting the miracle, it takes sacrifice. You have to be willing to be a prayerful man. You have to be willing to be a man that is so much focused on the word, has the word of in him, has the word indwelling him, because it is the word that is in you, and the word quickened by prayer, that when it comes out of your mouth, it will bring effect. Amen. The third thing, let me say the final thing because of time. One of the ways that you can walk in power is by association. Amen. They can say association. association. Ask somebody who are your friends. Oh, come on, ask the person. <laughs> the Bible 
Bible said that as iron sharpens iron, Amen. as iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his brother. Amen. The Bible said, work with the wise and you shall be wise. Amen. But work in the congregation of foolishness and you shall be foolish. The Bible says that blessed is the man that does not live in the counsel of the ungodly. Listen, if you carry some anointing over your life, you cannot work with everybody. If you carry some anointing over your life, your life will be straight. If you carry some anointing over your life, you'll be misunderstood. You'll be misconstrued. People will not understand you because people that carry strength and nineteen, they behave strangely. Amen. Jesus Christ, when he came out of the whole world, he chose twelve. Amen. Even him. And out of the twelve, he had only three. And the Bible says that even the three, when he went to them, sometimes he left them and he moved ahead. You see, in order to carry some anointing, who you work with, who speaks into your life, who your spiritual father is, matters. Amen. There's a certain anointing. Pastor, you know it. We don't pray for it. There's a certain You see, you see, when the more you work with someone for long, the more you speak like the person. Amen. The more you talk like the person. Amen. The more you behave like the person. Amen. Because the anointing, it rubs. First Samuel 10. Read 6 for me, from 5. First Samuel 10. Do it quickly for me. This is someone telling Saul how he's going to encounter the anointed. From five, please. That's Psalm 10, five. After that, she shall come. He told him a lot of things and he says, After that, you shall come to the hill of God. You come to the hill of God. Where the Philistine garrison is. Where the Philistine garrison is. Stand there. The very place where the hill of God is. Is the very place where the Philistine garrison is. If you want to be anointed but you are afraid of battle, you are joking. Yes. Everywhere there is honey, bees are there. He yes. said that you will come to the hill of God. The, place, the very place where the hill of God is, garrison means barrier. He said the very place where the hill of God is, that is where the barrier of the enemy is. But what? It will happen when you have come there to this. When you come there, continue. That you will meet a group of prophets. You will meet a group of prophets. They are not coming from the high place. Listen, they are coming from where? They are not a group of prophets that are coming from the bedroom of their girlfriends. Be careful who lays his hands on you. The prophets are coming from the hill of God. They are not coming from the drinking spot. They are coming from the hill of God. What happens? With a stringed instrument. They are coming with stringed instruments. A tambourine. A tambourine. A flute. A flute. Keep on this instrumentalist. Every key you touch is significant. They are coming from the hill of God. They are coming with tambourines, with string instruments. Continue. And they will be prophesying. They will be prophesying. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon the you. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will prophesy. Sit down. They will be prophesying. A moment, a moment you enter into the midst. Because they are prophesying, the gift of prophecy will land upon you and you shall prophesy. Amen. Some anointing comes through association. Elijah, when he was departing, and because Elijah was with him, when Elijah was taken, Elijah received the anointing. Paul told Timothy, do not despise the gift that is in you, or that was placed on you. Stir them up. Don't just think which was placed in you by the laying on of hands. He said that Timothy, you do not pray for that gift. We laid our hands on you and received it. You received it because you were with us. And he told them, you see, it was not just because of what it started from your grandmother and it was upon your mother. There's a certain anointing. If you work with a man that is anointed, you shall
shall be anointed. If you walk with a prayerful man, you'll be prayerful. Amen. If you walk with a drunkard, you become a drunkard. So in as much as you are praying and you are a man of the word, the Bible says that guard your heart with all diligence. Observe who is speaking into my life. Amen. Who is my mentor? Who is my spiritual father? Amen. There's an anointing you receive it through service. The more you are serving the man of God. When God was speaking to Samuel, he had Samuel through the voice of Eli. He had God through the voice of the spiritual father. Amen. He went to Eli and said, are you calling me? He said, no, it is God. But he knew the voice of his spiritual father. So when God was speaking to him, the voice sounded like that of his spiritual father. Mm -hmm. Association is crucial. Mm -hmm. People that carry on common anointing don't just work with anyone. Amen. I tell people, I am a friend with everybody, but I'm a friend of no man. Amen. When I see you, I'm happy. We are nice, we laugh, but it ends there. Mm -hmm. I have a heart for people, I love people, but in order to protect what I carry, I must be circumspect in whom I call a friend. The Bible says that evil communication corrupt good manners. Amen. There are some people, the moment they are speaking into your life, your anointing will die. Yes. Be on your feet. We are going to pray. Sam and the guys come forward. I've shown you three ways because of time, I'll leave it there. But the anointing is available, but you must plug into it. And in order to plug into it, you should be a person of prayer. A person who just don't speak but believes. And a person that the word of God is intertwined with the spirit. And not just that, but you have to observe which company you find yourself in. The people that are serving pastor serving diligently. Because there's certain anointing, no amount of prayer would give it to you. By just walking with him, you receive it. Amen. That's how it works. That's how it works. Left that one. When it's time for prayer, please, you, the instrumentalist, you sit down because there's some anointing when you guys play, it comes. Mm. You people play a very crucial role in the service. Lift up your hand. Have you understood some of the ways you can walk in an uncommon anointing? Susie, have you understood some things tonight? Lift up your hands to Speak to God. Father, we give you glory, Lord, we give you honor. We thank you, Lord, Father, for such a revelation, Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, we give you honor, Father, in Church, listen. The Bible says that as they gathered and they were praying, suddenly the Holy Ghost overshadowed them as two. So we are going to pray, and as we are praying, suddenly let the Holy Ghost overshadow us. Lift up your voice and pray.
Holy Ghost. When I clap my hands and I pray, I plug, I plug into the anointing right now. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and pray.
to him. Amen. Church, to carry a straight anointing, you'll be strange. Amen. I'm telling you, Pastor is not here because he acted like everyone. To carry a straight anointing, your life will be straight. Sometimes your own mother and father will not even understand you. Amen. Because the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the spirit. Yes. Lift up your hand. He said that as you are going up on the hill of God, you meet a group of prophets that are prophesying. Amen. And they ask, as they are prophesying, you shall begin to prophesy. You are praying, Father, connect me to the right people. Amen. Connect me to the people that was influence me spiritually. Father, link me to the people you have ordained for me. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and pray. Connect me, connect me. Connect me.
but the enemy is trying to steal him through friends. If you're not careful and you don't encourage him to be coming into the presence of God, your son would enter into an evil company. And if your son enters an evil company because you are in church, there are some things I don't want to say. But you see your son at the place where he's not supposed to be. But God is saying that the more you are coming with him into this church, there's a certain anointing over that boy from the time he was born. And there's a prophetic word about him that he will do the work of God. But you have to make sure that he's always in the house of God. Because anytime you come without him, the enemy is taking an advantage through friends. Because I was praying, God said, ask him, where is his son? Lift up your hands. Final prayer. Holy Spirit, overshadow me. Overshadow me. Close your eyes. Overshadow me. Just be saying that word. Overshadow me. Overshadow me. Say it. Say it like you mean it. Overshadow me. Say it like you mean it. Overshadow me. Say it like you mean it. Overshadow me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Overshadow me. Overshadow me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Take over my mind. Take over my mind. Take over my heart, take over my spirit, take over my Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, overshadow me, overshadow me. Love your hands and give Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. your life will never be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is only three days of this program here. Amen. Have five days more to go. Yes, and the way the Lord God has used is seven yesterday and today in the teaching of the word of God and the demonstration of his power. Shall we lift up our hands and bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. That which has been imparted into your spirit, don't go and abandon them. Life transforming message has been presented to you. Now you are more than a conqueror. Jesus name, my boy. Spirit relationship 
Now we are saying it to you. Because we know it works. Demonstrate it now. Don't go home fast. Now. Let it work for you. Speak over it now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Mighty God will bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.